In this section of the course, we're going to cover the topic of logarithms and specifically derivatives of logarithms. Um, so again, we're getting into a little bit more advanced topics, some functions that you don't see every day. The most common function generally is a polynomial. We've talked about that. We've talked about the trigonometric functions, and now we're going to get into logarithms. So let me just go ahead and explain what we're going to do here by means of a couple of examples. Just recall for me here um, some pretty basic integrals that we've already talked about. The integral of x squared dx, uh, you all know what the answer to that is. And the answer to that is 1 third x cubed plus a constant. And how did we do that? Just for review, well, we go 1 over, take the exponent, add 1 to it, and write an x down, and then put the exponent again and add 1 to it. Okay. Um, again, just for completeness, another example, integral of x cubed dx, okay, um, 1 fourth x to the fourth plus a constant. The, the mechanics of it's pretty straightforward. 1 over exponent plus 1, uh, write x down, and then in the exponent put a, pl put a uh, plus 1 there. Now I ask you, what is the integral of x to the minus 1 dx? Um, x to the, to the minus 1 power. Well, if you were going to try to apply our standard old rule that we use for polynomials, and you would say, okay, 1 over exponent plus 1, and then x to the exponent plus 1. Okay, what would this equal? 1 over negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and then x to the 0. Okay, because this, this plus this gives me 0. Well, this anything to the zero power is one. What does this part mean? One over zero. What does that mean? Well, um, in other math classes that you may have had, you might have learned that anything over zero is undefined. Well, when you start to get into calculus and start talking about limits and things like that, you're going to start to realize and you're going to have to know that when something's divided by zero, it's really infinity. In other words, zero can go into any number an infinite number of times, right? You can divide zero, you can divide nothing into something a whole bunch of times, an infinite number of times. So clearly, if you were to do this, the answer would be infinity. For any time that you were trying to do this integration, and this just isn't this just isn't true. Okay, so this formula, this mechanical means that we use, it doesn't work when you're trying to take the integral of uh, x to the minus one. So that's why early on when I said the integral of x to the n dx is equal to 1 over n plus 1 x to the n plus 1. We said that was it, but we said that's only true when x is not equal to negative 1, when you don't have a negative 1 up here. This is precisely, this is precisely why. You can't, you can't do this integral when, when you have a minus 1 up here, because if you go ahead and you try to apply it, you're just going to get some nonsense answer. And this is definitely not true. So you can't do that. So. What you need to keep in mind is that when you have x to the minus 1 here, this isn't going to work at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some definitions. The calculus book is going to give you the details, but I'm not going to give you the details here. I'm going to give you the, the results, and we're going, to, we're going to use those results. Um, I'm going to write the properties down over here, and we're going to use them. The integral of 1 over x dx and don't forget 1 over x is just simply x to the minus 1. The same, same problem we were just working a minute ago. Is defined by definition to be the natural logarithm of x. And of course you have a constant just like you do for any derivative. I'm sorry, for any integral. 